Hello and welcome back to Bombchu Gaming News. My name is Chris, and I'll be covering some of the news from this week that we found interesting. Cyberpunk 2077 had an interesting launch, to say the least, and it seems to be killing off a lot of CD Projekt Red's goodwill with their fans, as well as upsetting the general gaming public. When Cyberpunk finally launched after years of hype and several delays, many were happy to finally have the game in their hands. However, the launch was not the joyous occasion that many fans were wanting, especially those who purchased it on consoles. Cyberpunk launched with a number of glitches, bugs, and other issues, as is almost expected with this type of game, and especially given the history of CD Projekt Red's other games also launching in a rough state, such as The Witcher 3. However, the console versions running on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are much worse than anticipated, and in some cases completely unplayable. Ignoring the bugs and glitches currently affecting the PC version as well, consoles are also dealing with much uglier graphics, to the point of some screenshots and videos seeming like parody of low-end graphics, including a drastically reduced crowd size and draw distance, as well as a poorly rendered and hardly lively or even sometimes visible version of Night City. The console versions of Cyberpunk are performing so poorly that both Sony and Microsoft began offering full refunds of the game, regardless of purchase date or playtime. Sony has even gone so far as to pull Cyberpunk from the PlayStation's digital store, leaving physical copies as the only way for PS4 owners to experience the game for themselves. This release has left many fans confused as much as they are outraged. If Cyberpunk had been delayed so many times, and especially the last minute delays it suffered most recently, why are the console versions still running this poorly? What would the game have looked like had it launched back in April as was previously planned, or even as recently as last month until a last minute delay? While one might shudder at the thought of an even more broken console version of Cyberpunk, some people are taking the situation far more seriously. Investors in the parent company CD Projekt are considering the possibility of a class action lawsuit against the company, claiming that CD Projekt purposely withheld information from and misled the investors regarding the state of Cyberpunk 2077. While lawsuits like this aren't uncommon for a game that's had a rough launch, there seems to be a little more ground to the case here that could lead to an actual day in court. Reviewers were purposely not given review copies for the console versions of the game, and there are reports that all early reviews of the game were only allowed to use pre-rendered game footage and officially issued files for their video reviews. Anyone not willing to comply with these rules presumably had to wait until the game was officially released before they could show off the graphical issues, bugs, and other glitches. While a large amount of the public has turned on the game, and certainly with good reason for at least some of them, the experience seems to vary greatly from user to user. Personally, I've put 82 hours into the game so far, and I have finished the main storyline as well as most of the major side quests, and I've yet to experience a single crash or a major game-breaking bug. I have had my fair share of T-posing characters, glitches, and other annoyances, including a somewhat serious story moment breaking all tension by having a character glitch out and go flying out of a car we were both riding in together. However, none of this was anything more than immersion-breaking at worst, and minorly annoying at best, and every bug or glitch was fixed with a quick reload of a recent auto or manual save. While I know that I'm lucky to have had the experience I've had with Cyberpunk, I also realize that for many people, this game will be very much unplayable. I think the story, writing, setting, and characters are all extremely well executed, and when it works, the gameplay is incredibly fun and varied in how you can approach any given situation. The Witcher 3 was eventually patched into becoming one of the most well-regarded RPGs of all time, and even though Cyberpunk is in a much worse state now, I believe that the game will eventually be patched and fixed to where it should have been at launch. The question remaining is, will gamers be willing to wait that long, or has CD Projekt Red burned all of their goodwill with an unforgettably janky launch? At this point, only time will tell. Bandai Namco has announced the final two DLC characters coming to Dragon Ball Fighters. In an impressive in-game cinematic trailer, Fighters showed off the first new character, Super Baby Vegeta. For anyone not familiar with the mostly horrible GT story, Baby is one of the major villains of GT's most well-regarded arc. Baby is the sole survivor of a planet destroyed by the Saiyans long ago, and wants to kill every Saiyan that's left. He eventually takes over the body of Vegeta, which is what gives him the form shown in the trailer. In Fighters, he's called Super Baby 2, which is kind of a confusing name for the character, but I guess it's less confusing than the technically accurate name of Super Baby Vegeta Form 2. Super Baby 2 is quite a large character, similar in size to Cooler, and as is expected from Fighters, has a lot of incredibly flashy and series faithful moves that looks like they're going to be a blast to play around with. The end of the trailer also offers us a quick look at Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, complete with a glorious coat of red fur and a tail. The designs of GT characters are a little bit ridiculous in general, but I've always had a soft spot for them personally, and Baby is one of my favorite Dragon Ball character designs of all time. 
I started Dragon Ball Fighters just buying the individual characters as they drew my interest at release, but I purchased the Fighter Pass 3 on a whim based on its strong start with both Kefla and Ultra Instinct Goku. Now that the pass has been filled out with Master Roshi, and now Super Baby as well as Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, I couldn't be happier with my purchase, and I'm very excited to give these new GT characters a spin. Luckily, we won't have to wait long, as Super Baby 2 releases on January 15th, with Gogeta following at an unspecified time after that. And those are the headlines that caught our eye for this week. Make sure you let us know your thoughts on the news in the comments below, and you all have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, and a very Happy New Year. A huge shout out and thank you to Michael Slater, Blake Harms, and all of our other glorious patrons over on Patreon. Your support is what makes shows like this one possible. Thanks for watching.